Hey everybody, welcome back to another Projects in the Barn video. Um, so you would have seen from my last video, I was talking about my motorhome I'm rebuilding. So um, I've been super busy with that, as you can probably appreciate. Uh, but I just want to give you an update on my Jag behind me. Um, so since I fixed the water leak a month or so ago, um, on the water coming in through the uh, door rain gutters, I've been sort of using it, I've been cutting around in it and really, really enjoying it. And last week it was, I was driving to work and it came up with restricted performance. First time ever, it's never done that with me before. Um, so, but the car felt, I was only going about 50 mile an hour. The car felt the same. I put my foot down to accelerate and it cleared the code. I just drove through it. I thought oh, maybe a little glitch, so I've not been using it for a long time. Um, but every day since it's been doing it more and more often. So um, it's been coming up uh, with restricted performance after driving for around probably two or three miles. Sometimes it goes off, sometimes it stays on. But when it stays on, when you come to a junction or whatever, it goes really lumpy at idle, like it's not firing on all eight cylinders. So I come back home last week, um, plugged me scan tool into it um, just to see what it was. And it come up with the code of P0353 from memory. Um, so a quick bit of Googling uh, showed that it was a possible misfire on cylinder number three. So I was out here in the car, as you can imagine, with the doors open, the bonnet open, um, running my scan tool, going through some diagnostics to try and sort of pinpoint it down. And like I say, when I come up with that code, that seemed to be the right idea that it was a misfire. It definitely feels like a misfire. Um, somewhere else on Google, uh, because it came up with uh, P0353, again, that's from my memory, um, it comes up with, um, some on when you Google it, sometimes it comes up with a, a generic misfire pointing to an ECU. Uh, another good resource I was looking at, one of the Jaguar forums, come up with it indicating to um, a, a misfire on a specific cylinder. So the 353, the, the N3 being for cylinder number three. So if it was on cylinder four, it'd be 0354 and so on and so on. So what I've done is I've contacted Auto Reserve Jaguar that I've used before and they've kindly sold me a single coil pack. Cost me about £16 delivered, something like that. But it's a genuine Denso one, um, which matches my others. So um, that came in the post today. So I thought I'd come out, do a video of me changing it over. And unfortunately, say I've plugged in me scan tool, I just noticed that me dash lights were a bit dim. So um, anyway, I've got the battery charger on there, checked the voltage and stuff. Yeah, it was down to just over 10 volts. And I think that's just me where I've been here playing with it, with the scan tool uh, for a couple of hours the other day. And this was last week. And um, yeah, I've left the car here at home, unlocked. Um, and I think it's just drained the battery down. Um, so anyway, I'll show you what I'm doing and I'll give you a quick update as to where we are with it. So there's my beautiful Jag, looking dirty. <laughs> but I've got the boot open, I've got the charger in there. Um, so you can see there, hopefully you can see. So yeah, it's indicated, I've just collected it up. So it's indicating, it's done its tests. So uh, this particular charger um, will do a, um, a battery test before it starts charging to let you know the condition of your battery. And yeah, so it'd come up at 10.1 volts. So it's run its test. Um, and what it's doing now is what they call a pulse charge uh, to revive the battery. And then once it gets to 10.5 volts, it allows me then to select a program on how best to charge my style of battery. Um, so yeah, I need to wait for it to get up to 10.5 volts. And then I can press the selector button here and that goes through the different modes. And for me, if you go to the instruction manual, let's pop it up here. Turn the page. So if we go to the chart, and I want mode three for the car. So maximum 14.4 volts. Um, so that's what I'm going to be going to, but it needs to get to 10.5 volts on this particular charger 
uh, before it will allow me to um, select the charge program. Now my big mains charger I've actually got down the barn on my leisure batteries on the motorhome I'm building. So this one uh, is one that I purchased um, to do a trickle charge on this car while I leave it parked up down the barn. It's the first time I've used it um, and so we'll see how we go. Um, so yeah that's what we're going to be doing today so we need to let that get charged up and then we've got inside the car waiting is the envelope there that's got the new coil pack in it and my scan tool uh, but I cleared the code I was going to show the uh, code come up but I cleared the code last week when I was playing around with it um, <coughs> excuse me so it's actually cleared I've not driven it since if I open the old girl up uh, cylinder number three in this instance uh, is you see all mine are indicated obviously someone's been in there before for maintenance and R3 is right bank number three cylinder so it goes from the front of the engine <clears throat> my radiator front of the car then it goes one two three four five six seven eight so I mine the label right one two three four and left one two three four so what we're going to be doing is removing the um, air box uh, the mass airflow sensor, the breather pipes. So we're going to take all that out of the way so I can get to the covers of the coil packs that live underneath there. But what I'm going to do first is let the battery charge up and then when the um, battery's charged I know I've got um, all my systems working properly and then we can go ahead and um, do the swap over and then I can take it for a drive see if I get the same error come up or not. And basically what I'm hoping is if the error fails to come back up again, I've sorted the problem. If it does come up again, knowing that I've obviously replaced the cylinder coil pack that it refers to on my code, the alternative may be an ECU issue. Fingers crossed it's not. On my first XK I bought, well probably, I don't know, four years ago, four or five years ago, I had the same thing come up on that and it was uh, one of the coil packs. And I diagnosed that by swapping... So let's just say, for example, it was cylinder three coil pack that my scan tool indicated. I swapped it over with the coil pack on cylinder number four, and then I took it for a drive, come up with restricted performance again, plugged in my code reader, and it come up with the code, but relating to number four cylinder this time. So that identified me as having a dodgy coil pack. Um, but this time round, like I say, it's always handy to have a spare coil pack. So for the sake of 15 or 16 pounds, I thought that's what I'll do. I'll get one in reserve. I'll stick it on. To be honest with you, uh, when I looked in there the other day, I've got one aftermarket call pack in on the left-hand bank. Um, I've not opened up the right-hand bank yet, so we're going to see what I find in there. But I should probably just buy a whole new set. But before I buy a whole new set of coil packs, because I want to give it a service as I keep going on about, I want to change the plugs, the packs, the oil filters and everything else. So but before I commit to buying new coil packs, because they are quite expensive, I want to determine the problem of this fix that if it fixes it happy days we can go ahead and get all the core packs replaced when i do my service on the car but for now i say we'll let this charge up and then we'll come back to it once it's all powered uh well once i've got the power then we can see if that's open that core pack over so join me again in a minute when i've got 12 volts right so as you can see it's a bit later i've had a haircut and a beard trim um, it's a day or two later because I've had to leave the battery and stuff on charge and that charge I got for it, it's more of a, a, a maintenance charge than a proper charger so it's taken a while for it to charge up. Anyway, it's pretty much there so I'm just going to crack on and get it done. So um, we'll get the camera set up and then we'll take you through the process of how we're going to go about changing this coil pack over. So it's pretty straightforward, I'll just run you through what I'm going to be doing and it's basically as I said we're going to remove the uh, air intake get all that out of the way just give me access into the uh, trim cover there and then we'll be able to look at the get the core packs out so let me say I'll set the camera up and then uh, we'll start taking stuff off okay hopefully that'll be uh, good enough to see so we're going to start off by taking off uh, a couple of eight mil bolts here and here, either side of the uh, intake onto the throttle body. And 
what? You wonder why my engine looks damp. So I've, had, I've left the bonnet open uh, the last couple of days, not locked down properly. So it's just the uh, air got to it, and it's still early in the morning. So there's still a bit of dew around. All right, that's those two off. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're just going to take off the uh, pipe here as well. So we'll take it off from here. Just squeeze the knurled parts together. And carefully, that's it, come away, there we go. Just gonna rotate that round. We just need to take off the um, air box, get that out of the way. Um, so, I know this is instrument is broken, so we'll disconnect the Mass airflow sensor. So we're just going to push down on the tab here and slide that back out of the way, like so. We can lift this away, and all of this in one go should come loose. We're just going to tease it away from the snorkel that just goes into the inner wing. Like so, and that's the airbox out of the way. There you go. So that now leaves the cover, which covers all the coil packs. And I've got these six eight mil bolts to remove. We can have a look inside there and um, see what we can see. The state, yeah, there's a job to add to the listlet. My strut top mounts are pretty perished. All right. Let's hope the. Uh, Camera doesn't, <laughs> camera doesn't fall. It should be close enough to see what I'm doing in there anyway. Well, they're smaller than an eight. They must be a seven mil. Seven, there we go. So we'll just carefully wind these. Just to be a little bit careful because um, these covers are only plastic. I say over the years with the um, differing temperatures, the hot and the cold, they do become brittle. But hopefully we should be okay. There's also a rubber seal underneath these covers. So we need to check the condition of that before we put it all back together. Let's take the little extension bar off for these last two. socket off and use that by hand just to unwind them out one just be careful
we don't want to drop anything here. Okay, it's the last one. <coughs> Move the cover. Well, that's good. It's all the original Denso ones. We'll just pop that to one side. Yeah, so it looks like it's all the original coil packs in there. There we go. These are what they call four pin coil packs, purely because there's four wires going to each coil pack. So you do a two pin and a four pin. So if you're going to check or do this job yourself make sure you check to see whether you have the two pin or the four pin plugs um mine's a bit of a weird crossover year it's a 99 2000 so a few parts changed during that time but mine is the four pin which is what i bought so all we need to do is unplug core pack number three take out the two bolts which hold it in place and swap it over i think i'll pull the plug just to check the spark plug as well underneath it so um, let's get that core pack undone. Put the camera back in a position where we can see what I'm doing. So hopefully if I just put the camera down a little bit. There we go, and hope, there we go, right, I'll say, <coughs> these 8 mil. no, they're 7, it's the same as, excuse my arm, same as the covers, i say it's just the two bolts, so we'll just unplug it. So we'll just push down the tab and carefully I'll just get um, a blade on that. I just want something to lever behind it so I don't put any pressure on the um, cables. So, there we are, Let's slide them away, this gives me access into those bolts. So they're not done up particularly tight, there will be sport, uh, tech tech talk specs either online or in the book to put these back in so i won't say what they'll be for mine so i don't need copying and breaking anything this is just a, a video showing you how i'm doing my stuff so uh, if you're interested in talk values then please check it out <sighs> Again, I'll just use the head of the socket to help me wind it out. So this, at first, probably seems quite a daunting job, those of you that haven't ever tackled anything like this. But as you can see, we've only been here a few minutes, and we're already into it. So it's only nuts and bolts. Right, that's those two out the way. And this should slide up. A, bit, a tiny bit of resistance because it's on a rubber sucker. There we have it. That's your coil pack. There's nothing any or anything visually wrong with it. There's probably a check you can do for coil packs. I'm not aware of what it is. 
Um, you can just see the um, contact in the top of the rubber there, hopefully, and the sleeve. There you go. That's what touches the top of your spark plug. Same as an old school HT lead. Uh, for those working on old petrol engines, um, similar sort of modern version of that. So I just put the coil pack down to one side. I think just because I'm here, I'm going to pull the spark plug out as well. Have a look at its condition. Not sure what size we've got. Let's try that one. Yep, we're on. Yeah, generally speaking, you've got two different sizes of spark plug in terms of the um, socket on the spark plug to undo. I'll tell you what this one is in a moment. I'll get it out. Again, there'll be torque values for these. But I say, when you've been doing it long enough, you get a feel for how they are. Certainly that's how I do it anyway. But by all means, check your books. So yeah, mine's a 10 mil spark plug. Oh, look at that, look. You see that? So although we've got a little bit of oil on the end here, you normally get it at the base there. You can see where it's a little bit oily around the side of the engine. Well, we've got the um, breather hose here, which if I put my finger in, you can see, well, that's clean oil. It's a bit oily. And what tends to happen on this side is when this breathes out, some of the residue from the oil will sit along this bank of the engine. And if it gets down underneath the seal, and again, it can just sort of slide its way down into the plugs or whatever. But in terms of burn on the end of that, so it's a nice sort of goldeny brown tan colour. That indicates a good plug. But while it's out, I'm going to wipe away the excess oil just on the seat of the plug and uh, give it a bit of a clean up. So let me get my brush a moment. Okay, so here's my plug. If you can see that model number. PFR5013E. Should be an N yeah, NGKR. There you go. So we're just going to um, give a bit of a wire brushing off on the top. It's never going to come up immaculately shiny, but just going to clear away the worst of any debris that's on it. So let's give that a wipe over. There we go. I'm just going to take a um, photo of that. So I know what model it is when I order some new ones. I get a focus. Right, so I'm happy with that plug. That can go back in. And so all I'm going to do now is just going to put a cloth down into the hole just to clean away any uh, residue that might be down inside there. We'll just use the um, spark plug socket for that. So I'm just going to wrap the cloth around the end of my socket like so. And give it a bit of a uh, clean. I'll be too fat for that. Let's take the socket back off and just go in with the extension bar. There we go. I'm just going to give it a, a clean up. Happy days. Okay, so put the spark plug back in. Most spark plug sockets have got a uh, rubber insert that grips the plug so they don't fall out. So he says, there you go, you can tip it upside down and it will stay. So I'm just going to gently 
slide it back in. Always, always start it off by hand. Always. Never be tempted with an electric gun or anything like that. I'm just going to wind it in all the way. Like so. And you just literally want to nip it up. That is it. Spark plug done. So, if I get our replacement plug out, which is just in the car, let me grab that a moment. Coil pack, I should say, not plug. So, coil pack. So, we'll just open it up. And oh, that passed the parcel. It. I've got a package within a package. Get rid of that. And hopefully, inside here. The identical, I'll well, just take them off. Package in, so very well packed up, thank you. Now, what we've got here then important information please read before opening the sealed package. Please inspect the contents of this sealed pouch to be certain that the item enclosed is suitable for your vehicle. Returns cannot be accepted for incorrectly ordered once removed from the sealed pouch. If you find that there is a problem with the part upon installation, please call our office helpline immediately. So that's very good of them. So we'll do what they say there. So we'll just check. It is a, let's see through the plastic bag, a four pin plug. And it is a Denso and we'll just check the part numbers. Old to new. So the number across the top lip, XW931209AB, which is the same. And then through the middle lip, MB099700-0260, which is the same, 12 volt Denso Spain. So we know from that we've got an identical part. So I'm happy to take the cover off. So let's open that up. That's a, a good thorough way of them doing their business, I think. Yeah. I dare say there's a few unscrupulous people that would um, try and wing it, maybe send them back <laughs> their old coil pack or whatever it might be and say that it didn't work. So, right, there it is, out of the package. And all we're going to do is slide this in Yep, contacts in the bottom of the tube. Just check that. We're going to slide that in now. Minding the wires out of the way. And just push it home over the spark plug. Like so. And we can pop our screws back in. Again, just do it all by hand. We'll put both of them in before we even look at tightening them up just to make sure it's lined up properly okay we'll just pop our seven mil socket on there we're just gonna hand tighten them Top one and the bottom one, and we're just going to pinch it up with the uh, ratchet attached to the socket. But again, please check your book for any torque specifications. It may be. I'm going for that tight. <laughs> Again, you'll just get a used to a feel of how these things are. 
it's pinched up there we go okay so now what we want to do is just plug it back in again like so push it home so it clicks like that that's the spark plug and call pack back on so I'm just going to get some degreaser I'm just going to clean around the uh, opening here and then we'll see about putting the cover back on right so I've just got a bit of um, cleaner put that on my cloth I'm just going to give this a bit of a um, clean up see the um, oil and dirt coming off let's get this piece across the top try not to rub away the lettering <laughs> Yeah. Well, you, know, you need to read them. Yeah, we might have to come up with something a bit more permanent. Maybe some stickers will do for them. But anyway. Well, that, as, as you know, that, that one's off the floor. Yeah. It yeah. must go downwards. Uh, well, that's clever, mate, yeah. And then we'll do the same thing on our cover. You can just see the rubber seal all the way around there. I'll just give that a quick wipe over. Get rid of any deposits and grit. So, there you go, you know what I'm saying about it being delicate, hot and cold. Hey, have a look, I've lost a corner. That's annoying, isn't it? See that? You do that for normally, just Yeah. Ah, oh, see that corner there? Yeah, it was cracked, but now it's off. So I'm going to go and glue that back on, and then come back out to the <laughs> come back out to the car. Well, that's a bind. I don't have any glue. Well, the glue that I got here has actually gone off. So I can come back to that. But for the purpose of finishing the video, we'll go ahead and install the cover. Um, so again, we'll just double check coil packs in. Everything's plugged in again and nothing else, all the wiring is all still intact. Um, none of it has uh, come away or degraded or anything like that. So, which is great news. So we can just go ahead and pop our cover the way around, this way around. Pop our cover back on again, like so. I'll just pop one here in the middle. Just to get it going. Like that. I have one on this side here. Great. I'll just put all these in loosely. See here, this one's actually missing a piece of the corner as well. So I might need to try and uh, find another good second hand one of these covers. Because it is pretty important that these stay on nice and tight. Or tight enough so the seal seals. Um, and I say to try and stop the debris getting down inside there. Go. And then 
as I start with the two most difficult, which is by the strut tower. Sorry if my hand and arm is blocking the view. I just want to drop the socket down into the engine bay or on the floor. Nice hand tight, we'll do the same on this one. Knit those two up. This is the longest part of the job, look. <laughs> He's pulsing. Okay, that's those parts done and dusted. And while I'm here, I think it'd be prudent just to put a bit of a throttle body cleaning down the throttle body. So I'll just grab that, do that, and then we can reassemble the rest of it. So there we go. This is a bit of uh, what I've got on the shelf. Car plan, carbon air intake cleaner. You can see down the bottom there, hopefully. Carburetor, choke, throttle body and valve induction system. So we're just going to give that a bit of a spray. And there. So, <clears throat> I'm just going to clean away any temporary deposits. So, for the butterfly valve, there we go. Okay, so now we can see about putting the um, um, snorkel and everything back on. <coughs> so we'll just start down the end where the air filter is. So we need to get the uh, vent pipe in that goes to the inner wing. Get that back into the air box. Like so. And then it will kind of just fall back down into place. 
really important you make sure that the seal goes over the throttle body like so you don't have any air leaks there so we'll just wind these back in you don't want that twisted or deformed in any way at all that will result in really poor running like so we'll just pop back to our 8 mil socket So it's just this one. There, and then one down here. That's that. And then we just want to clip in our airflow sensor. Let's rotate, give that a bit of a clean out a minute. Maintenance surface. Always rotate that back round to its position. Carefully clip that into place. Let's say my air filter box. So the instruments are actually broken um, down here and underneath. That's why it came out so easy. Otherwise, you'd have to undo the little nut that's on there. So that should be the job done. So let's clear away our tools. There we have it, one coil pack changed. That's real time, nothing sped up. As you can see, it's a pretty straightforward thing to do. Access is pretty decent, to be fair. Um, the only fiddly places are where it's up tight against the strut tower here and down by some heat shield in there. On the other side, it's the same thing, so it's a bit tight against the strut tower. There's one down there by the pipes um, in the corner. And again, that's a little bit fiddly, but it's all doable uh, with a short eight mil socket. Um, so yeah, happy days. All we need to do now is take it for a spin. So I think that's what I'm going to do. So we'll um, drop the bonnet down and then I can um, start the old girl up. I'll go for a drive. Wasn't too bad, was it? So uh, we'll take it for a spin. Uh, I haven't got my phone holder inside the car, so I can't film inside of it at the moment. It's actually broken. So I'm going to take it for a drive, see how we go. If there's any issues, I'll report back. If you don't hear back from me, you know it's all gone to plan. So <laughs> happy days. We'll assume it's fixed it. Who knows? But if you see an added on bit to this video, you'll know that it's not fixed. So I might see in a minute. Hopefully I won't. So for now, thank you so much for watching another video from Projects in the Barn. Uh, I know it's been a while, uh, but as you can see, I'm doing all my different vehicles uh, that we have in the household at the moment. So I'm sort of spreading my time between all of them. My priority at the moment is my big motorhome I'm building. I'm on an eight week deadline to get that all finished for a holiday. So um, I'm pushing it a bit to get that done. And then you can see I've still got the XF the Type 25 in the background, the T5, which we'll be doing loads of work on, if you can see that. Um, we've done all the windows and bodywork and loads of work on that. So, um, yeah, my time's being spread thin. And obviously, I'm a family man. So, uh, excuse the uh, gaps in my videos coming out of late. But hopefully, we'll be back on it now. So, thank you so much for watching, everybody. I hope you appreciate uh, the videos that we're doing for you and you like them. If you know anybody that's like-minded and has similar tastes in vehicles, please share this video with them. And um, yeah, let's get as many people who enjoy this sort of stuff watching it as we possibly can. So thanks so much, everybody. Please like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one from Projects in the Barn. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye for now. <sighs> Come on, Jag. <laughs>